Uh, you have to forgive me, I am coming down with a little bit of a sniffle, so if you can hear that, that's why I've been travelling. happens every time. All right, if you would like to turn to your Bibles to 1 Corinthians, uh, chapter 12. We will uh, start reading there. <coughs> All right, uh, 1 Corinthians chapter 12. We'll probably read uh, the whole chapter. Uh, the whole thing is good. Uh, every part of the book of God's Word is uh, good for us. All right, so <coughs> uh, 1 Corinthians chapter 12. Now concerning spiritual gifts, brethren, I would ha not have you ignorant. Ye know that ye were Gentiles, carried away unto these dumb idols, even as ye were led. Wherefore I give you to understand that no man speaking by the Spirit of God calleth Jesus accursed, and that no man can say that Jesus is the Lord, but by the Holy Ghost. Now there are diversities of gifts, but the same Spirit. And there are differences of administrations, but the same Lord. And there are differences of operations, but it is the same God which worketh all in all. But the manifestation of the Spirit is given to every man to profit withal. For to one is given uh, by the Spirit the word of wisdom, to another the word of knowledge by the, same, uh, by the same Spirit, to another faith by the same Spirit, to another the gifts of healing by the same Spirit, to another the working of miracles, to another prophecy, to another discerning of spirits, to another divers kinds of tongues, to another interpretations of tongues. But all these worketh that one and the self same Spirit, dividing to every man severally as he will. For as the body is one and hath many members, and all the members uh, of that one body, being many, are one body, so also is Christ. For by one Spirit are we all baptized into one body, whether we be Jews or Gentiles, whether we be bond or free, and have been all made to drink into, that, into one Spirit. For the body is not uh, one member, but many. If the foot shall say, Because I am not a hand, I am not of the body, is it therefore not of the body? And if the ear shall say, Because I am not the eye, I am not of the body, <clears throat> is it therefore not of the body? If the whole body were an eye, where were the hearing? If the whole were hearing, where were the smelling? But now hath God set the members, every one of them, in the body, as it hath pleased him. Uh, and if they were all one member, where were the body? But now are they many members, yet but one body. The eye cannot say unto the hand, I have no need of thee, nor again the head to the feet, I have no need of thee, of you. Nay, much more, those members of the body which seem to be more feeble are necessary, and those members of the body uh, which we think to be less honourable, upon those we bestow more abundant honour, and our uncomely parts have more abundant comeliness. For our comely parts have no need, but God hath tempered the, whole, the body together, having given more abundant honour to that part which lacked that there should be no schism in the bottom body, but that the members should have the same care one for another, and whether one member suffer, all the members suffer with it, or one member be honoured, all the members rejoice with it. Now ye are the body of Christ, and members in particular, and God hath set some in the church first, apostles, secondarily prophets, thirdly teachers, after that miracles, then gifts of healings, helps, governments, diversity of tongues. Are all apostles? Are all prophets? Are all teachers? Are all workers of miracles, have all gifts of healing, do all speak with tongues, do all interpret, but covet earnestly the best gifts, and yet show I unto you more excellent way. Let's just pray and open. Dear Heavenly Father, Lord, just thank you for the time we can spend together with your word. We just want to thank you for it, Lord, and we uh, just want to thank you that it's perfect, and that uh, we have it, we can study it, we can learn more about you and how you would have us uh, behave, Lord, and how we move forward for you. Uh, Lord, I pray that you would help me, especially that uh, you put me aside and just help me to speak uh, your words. Um, I pray that it would be a help to someone today. I pray this in your name. Amen. Amen. Um, so I'd recently watched a, uh, a YouTube interview um, of Captain Larry Sequist. Uh, he was captain of the USS Iowa from 1986 and 1988. Um, during the interview, he said a few things um, that uh, just reminded me of how the church operates. Um, and how we're supposed to operate. Um, and I was really quite amazed at how similar uh, modern naval doctrine is to how God has uh, ordered the church. Um, the modern naval uh, doctrine has been in development since the 1500s. Um, after 500 years, they came to a similar system to how God organized the church. Um, I don't think this is any way surprising. Um, as we read in 1 Corinthians 14.33, 
For God is not the author of confusion, but of peace, as yeah, in all churches of the saints. Um, so when I was watching that, with missions conference coming up uh, at the end of the month, I thought it would be a good idea to uh, take a, a look at some of our own roles and responsibilities in the church, um, but also to look at it from the perspective of the church being a battleship. Um, the day we got saved, uh, we're all enlisted into God's army. Um, that's, that just came along with it. Um, and when we're enlisted, we're all given a, a place and a role. Um, there's a saying, I think it was actually Brother Bill posted on Facebook uh, quite a bit of time ago. Um, it goes like this. Uh, uh, the church is not a cruise ship where a handful of people serve everyone else who is relaxing. No, the church is a battleship where it's all hands on deck and everyone serves the mission. Um, so today let's look at the crew firstly, um, and I hope this will be a help especially to uh, the younger people here. Um, I know it's helped me, uh, especially that I pray you'll be encouraged and uh, uh, if you don't have a ministry that you're involved in, that uh, you would find one. Um, and if you're already serving in a ministry, that uh, you would be encouraged and continue serving there. Um, so first we're going to look at the captain. Uh, when I first started looking at the role of the captain, I thought that uh, the pastor would be the one to fill that role. Uh, but as I was reading, uh, I found that it's not the pastor, it's actually Jesus Christ. Jesus is the captain of this ship. Um, we read in uh, Colossians 1.18, uh, 1, uh, verse 18, and he is the head of the body, that's Jesus, the church, who is the beginning, the firstborn from the dead, that in all things he may have preeminence. And again, Ephesians 5.23 says, for the husband is the head of the wife, as also Christ is head of the church. He is the saviour of the body. Um, the list goes on on an quite a few verses like that. Uh, there is no debating that uh, Christ is the uh, uh, head of the church. Um, and we can most certainly praise God for that. Um, it's such a blessing to know that we have a captain that is perfect. He'll never get anything wrong. Uh, he loves us unconditionally, shows us mercy again and again, uh, and the list goes on too long to mention. Um, on modern ships, uh, the captain is responsible for every aspect of the voyage and vessel. Uh, they set course speed, they direct crew members, ensure that proper procedures are followed, keeping logs and records of the ship's movements, cargo and supervising the loading and unloading of cargo and passengers. During combat, the captain has full command of movement and guns through voice commands to his crew. Um, I think we could all agree that the church is in combat today. We are actively fighting against uh, our adversary, the devil. Um, uh, and we know that our captain, Jesus, has given us voice commands. We have the Bible. These are literally God's words. He has uh, given us his uh, commands, and it's now our responsibility for us to follow them. Um, the next person in the, the crew we'll be looking at is what's now called uh, the executive officer, the XO, or 2IC, um, would have been the first mate uh, several hundred years ago. Uh, this role, I believe, is occupied by the pastor. Uh, the XO's role is summarised as uh, typically responsible for the management of day-to-day -day activities, relaying commands from the captain to the right crew members, giving navigational data and instruction to the pilots. Um, pastors have many of the same responsibilities just listed. Um, pastors have been given not only the responsibility for caring for the church, but also for loving the church. Um, and as such, they have been given a rather long list of qualifications. If you want to turn to uh, 1 Timothy... First uh, Timothy three. <clears throat> All right, First Timothy three. Uh, this is a true saying: If a man desire the office of a bishop, he desireth a good work. A bishop then must be blameless, the husband of one wife, vigilant, sober, of good behaviour, given to hospitality, apt to teach, not given to wine, no striker not greedy of filthy lucre, but patient, not a brawler, not covetousness, not covetous, one that ruleth well his own house, having his children in subjection with all gravity. For if a man know not how to rule his own house, how shall he take care of the church of God? Not a novice, lest he be lest being lifted up with pride he fall into condemnation of the devil. Moreover, he must have a good report of them which are without, lest he fall into reproach and snare of the devil. Um, a man who is called to look after uh, God's church must be these things. Um, as all of these points 
uh, are required in the job description that Paul gives Timothy in uh, 2 Timothy chapter 4. I'd like to quickly switch over there as well. Uh, Paul gave this charge to Timothy as he was the pastor. Uh, There he says, I charge thee therefore before God and the Lord Jesus Christ, who shall judge the quick and the dead at his appearing and his kingdom. Preach the word, be instant in season, out of season, reprove, rebuke, exhort with all long suffering and doctrine. For the time will come when they will not endure sound doctrine, but after their own lust shall they heap to themselves teachers having itching ears, and they shall turn away their ears from the truth and shall be turned unto fables. Now that's uh, a picture of what we have today, isn't it? Um, it then goes on to say, uh, But watch thou in all things, endure afflictions, do the work of an evangelist, make full proof of thy ministry. Um, it's important to note, especially in those uh, uh, two passages there, that the pastor's main role uh, are spiritual. They are primarily there to teach, to rebuke, to uh, encourage, exhort, um, to set things right, to manage. Um, the pastor isn't supposed to be uh, necessarily doing all the, the physical things that can be done. Uh, if we want to turn over to Acts chapter 6, we'll see why that is. <clears throat> all right, in Acts chapter 6, we'll read, And in those days where the number of the disciples... Uh, When the number of the disciples was multiplied, there arose a murmuring of the Grecians against the Hebrews because their widows were neglected in the daily ministration. Then the twelve called the multitude of the disciples unto them and said, It is not reason that we should leave the word of God and serve tables. Wherefore, brethren, look ye out among you seven men of honest report, full of the Holy Ghost and wisdom, whom we may appoint over this business, but we will give ourselves continually to prayer and to the ministry of the word." And the saying pleased the whole multitude, and they chose Stephen, a man full of faith, and of the Holy Ghost, and Philip, and, uh, and the list goes on there. Um, it was decided early on that uh, pastors should be uh, ministering through their, uh, their roles, a, uh, a spiritual uh, minister, rather than dealing with these physical things. Um, it's important that uh, these roles be filled by others, um, Many of us can do these things, and pastor can only do. Uh, uh, there are things in the church that only the pastor can do, um, primarily preaching. Um, so these these other roles should be filled by us. Um, it's easy to say that the role of pastor is incredibly important in the church. Um, it's also important that we don't start to hero worship a pastor. Um, that never ends well. Uh, so many churches uh, are going down the wrong paths because uh, of uh, hero worship. <laughs> Um, the pastor is just a man and he will eventually fail you no matter how good of a man he is. Um, and also so many times people will uh, uh, look at the pastor and have their eyes on the pastor and when he does uh, fail, they'll then get uh, uh, upset and leave the church. But uh, they had their eyes on the wrong person. They should have their eyes on Jesus. Um, uh, and then you have the case of uh, if a pastor is uh, uh, turned away from God himself, and we're follow, blindly following him, uh, we'll be led away from the Lord. Uh, it is, in essence, an, a, a mutiny against our captain. Um, and it is, it's a such a sad statement. There are so many churches uh, in, uh, in Australia and America and around the world that are going down that path right now. Um, and the same can be said that uh, if the pastor has given us a command out of the word of God and then we don't follow it, we're still in mutiny against our captain. Um, so when God gives a command that uh, through the pastor, through, the, through his word, uh, we need to follow that. Um, so yeah, we also need to be just in prayer for our pastors. It's a more than a full-time job, uh, and it's uh, not easy. I would uh, it'd be incredibly difficult thing to do, to be in charge or to be uh, teaching so many people and having to, uh, to care for them. Um, yeah. uh, next, we're going to look at... Uh, the department heads uh, in the Navy. Uh, Department heads are where the rubber meets the road. Um, It's where the operation of the ship starts becoming very physical and practical. Um, In uh, in the church, this role is similar to deacons. 
Uh, we read in Acts 6 that these men were called to serve in a more physical role so that the pastors could focus on spiritual matters. Um, we read in Acts 6, 4, but we will give, give ourselves continually to prayer and to the ministry of the word. Um, so the role of a deacon uh, is also an important function of the church. Um, just as the pastors were given a list of qualifications, the deacons were also given a list. Uh, that was back in Timothy uh, 3. If you would like to turn to Timothy 3, we can, uh, 1 Timothy 3, we'll read the deacon's uh, list of qualifications given. <coughs> uh, Timothy, Timothy 3, verse 8. Uh, likewise, must the deacons be grave, not double-tongued, not given to much wine, not greedy of filthy lucre, holding the, minist- uh, the mystery of the faith in a pure conscience, and let these also be proved, then let them use the office of a deacon being found blameless. Even so, must their wives be grave, not slanderers, sober, faithful in things, uh, in all things. Let the deacons be the husbands of one wife, ruling their children and their own houses well. Uh, for they have uh, used the office of a deacon well per well purchased to themselves a good degree and great boldness in the faith which is in Christ Jesus. Um, yeah, so the, the primary role of the deacon is to be a servant uh, of God uh, in the church of God. Uh, we also need to be in prayer for our deacons. Um, uh, so much of what they do is in the background and uh, you'll never notice it. Um, unless it's not being done, then you will notice it. So we can just be in prayer for uh, uh, our deacons and the uh, helps that they uh, they are in the church. Um, next uh, is uh, in the Navy, uh, the roles become increasingly specific to a certain area, and these are called various officers. Um, in the church, I would say these people would be ministry leaders. Uh, we have quite a few ministries here in church. We have Club Victory, Holiday Bible Club, Street Ministry, Sunday School, Bible Memory Verses, uh, AV, Door Greeting, Letter Boxing, uh, Morning Tea, and there's more. Uh, besides that, uh, each of these ministries need faithful leaders for them to move forwards as they should. Um, if we read in First Peter 4, uh, 9 to 11. First <coughs> uh, Peter 4, 9 to 11 says, Use hospitality. Hosp- Hospitality one to another without grudging, as every man hath received the gift, even so minister the same one to another, as good stewards of the manifold grace of God. If any man speak, let him speak as the oracles of God. If any man minister, let him do it as of the ability which God giveth, that God in all things may have uh, may be glorified through Jesus Christ, to whom be praise and dominion for ever and ever. Amen. Um, it's important that. Uh, uh, these ministries have a leader and that uh, they are uh, faithful and that uh, they do it for, for God's glory. Um, the next role is uh, the able-bodied sailor. Um, they make the backbone of the ship. Uh, without them, the ship doesn't operate. Larry Sequist, the, the man who I watched the, uh, the interview, said that without the officers, the crew is nothing, and without the crew, the officers are nothing. Um, and the same is true of serving the church. If we have just ministry leaders... Uh, not only organizing, but also doing all the work in that ministry, they will burn out. Uh, service burnout is a real problem uh, that we can face. And Jesus actually dealt with it in uh, Mark uh, 6. I'd like to turn to Mark 6, verse 30 and 31. Mark 6, 30 uh, and 31. And the apostles gathered themselves together unto Jesus and told him all things, both what they had done and what they had taught. And he said unto them, Come ye yourselves apart into a desert place and rest a while. For there were many coming and going, and they had no leisure uh, so much as to eat. Um, They had been so busy with uh, serving that they had barely even had time to to sit and eat, um, and they were burning out. Uh, Interestingly enough, they... uh, then spent the rest of that evening uh, ministering to the uh, to the uh, to those that Jesus fed with it, the five loaves and two fishes. So they didn't really get the rest that day, but the point still stands that God told them they needed to uh, come apart and rest for a time. Um, so yeah, it's important that uh, uh, us 
who are not serving in a, a, a leader's role or anything like that, but we're still there to, uh, to, to serve in those ministries. Um, if we read in uh, 1 Corinthians 12, 4 to 6, uh, you don't need to turn there, I'll just read it from here. Um, now there are diversities of gifts, but the same spirit, and there are differences of administrations, but the same Lord. And there are diversities of operations, but the same God, which worketh in all, but the manifestation of the spirit is given to every man to profit with all. Uh, we all have a gift to serve in a ministry. It doesn't matter if you're leading or not. Uh, you've been uh, set in the church to serve in a role. Um, so yeah, it doesn't matter uh, where we're serving in, uh, in the church. Um, what matters is if you're serving where God wants you to be, um, and then he'll bless it. Um, 1 Corinthians uh, goes on from uh, 1 Corinthians 12, 14 to 18 says, For the body is not one member, but many. If the foot shall say, Because I am not the hand, I am not the body, is it therefore not of the body? And if the ear shall say, Because I am not the eye, I am not of the body, is it therefore not of the body? If the whole body were an eye, where were the hearing? If the whole were, the he uh, if the whole were hearing, where were the smelling? But now hath God set the members of every... Uh, members every one of them in the body as it hath pleased him. That's the most important part there, that it's pleased him. Um, and then the uh, uh, next point of that is that uh, we serve where it pleases him. Um, I'd say this is most important for especially us younger people as uh, we're starting to, a few of us, uh, starting to get that age where we have to make a decision on whether to, uh, to serve God or yourselves. Um, and uh, serving yourselves will never end well. Amen. So now is the time to make the decision, especially with missions conference coming up. Uh, where can you serve the Lord? Um, in what role can you uh, help? And it doesn't matter. Uh, doesn't matter what it is, as long as you're where God wants you to be serving. <clears throat> um, Colossians three twenty three and twenty four says, "And whatsoever ye do, do it heartily as to the Lord, and not unto men." knowing that of the Lord ye shall receive the reward of the inheritance, for ye serve the Lord Christ. Um, in Acts 9, after Paul was saved, um, he immediately started serving God. It says in Acts uh, 9, uh, 20, and straightway he preached Christ in the synagogues that he is the Son of God. Um, and then in Acts 11, 25 and 26, it says, then departed Barnabas to uh, Tarsus to, for to seek Saul. And when he had found him, he brought him unto Antioch. And it came to pass that a whole year they assembled themselves with the church and taught much people. And the disciples were called Christians first in Antioch. Um, we see Paul and Barnabas were faithfully uh, serving God where they were. Um, and it was at least a year's time um, before God had separated them for a special purpose. Because uh, then Jack, uh, Acts chapter 13, 1 to 3. Uh, now there were in the church that was in Antioch certain prophets and teachers as Barnabas and Simeon, uh, that was called Niger, and Lucius of Cyrene uh, and Manin, uh, which had been brought up with Herod, Tetrarch and Saul. As they ministered to the Lord and fasted, the Holy Ghost said, Separate me, Barnabas and Saul, for the work, whereunto I have called them. And when they had fasted and prayed and laid, hands, uh, laid their hands on them, they sent them away. They were faithful in serving where they were for a year before God had called them. Uh, and that's what we need to be doing now, especially as young people, that we need to be serving faithfully here. And then God may call us to wherever we are going next. And it may be uh, any amount of time. Um, all right, we're going to look at the next group of people now, uh, which is not really... Uh, they're the Marines, as I've named them. They're, they're not... Uh, technically part of the crew, but they do spend a large amount of time on ships. Uh, the ship is the mode of transport, the launching point, and the point of support for the Marines. Uh, in the church, these are our missionaries and evangelists. They are how the church reaches the uttermost part of the earth. Uh, Acts 1.8 says, But ye shall, ye shall receive power after that the Holy Ghost is come upon you, and ye shall be witnesses unto me both in Jerusalem and all Judea and in Samaria and unto the un to the uttermost part of the earth. Um, we're living in an age where there are less and less missionaries going out into the field, um, and I don't believe that's because God isn't calling people anymore. Um, if you want to turn to the book of Revelation, uh, Revelation 3, verses 14 to 17. Uh, 
Revelations 3, 14, 17. And unto the angel of the church of the Laodiceans write, These things saith the Amen, the faithful and true witness, the beginning of the creation of God. I know thy works, that thou art neither cold nor hot. I would thou wert cold or hot. So then, shalt, because thou art lukewarm, and neither cold nor hot, I will spew thee out of my mouth, because thou sayest, I am rich, and increased with goods, and have need of nothing, and knowest not that thou art wretched, and miserable, and poor, and blind, and naked. Here in Australia, we are incredibly blessed, financially speaking. It's, if, you, if you make 50000 a year, you are in the top 1% richest people in the world here in Australia. Our standard of living is so high compared to everywhere else in most of the world. We have uh, become so uh, distracted with uh, things of this life, the ease. Uh, we've become the Laodicean uh, church, so many churches around the world. It is the, it is the time of the Laodicean church. Um, Matthew 6, 20 and 21 says, But lay up for yourselves treasures in heaven, where neither moth nor rust doth corrupt, and where thieves do not break through nor steal. For where your treasure is, there will your heart be also. Uh, that is probably the, the biggest reason why we're not seeing so many missionaries go out into the field now, is that we've become so uh, distracted with the, uh, the wealth of this world. Um, so many of us uh, get distracted by it easily, and uh, in the end, it all gets burned up. We don't get to keep any of it. Um, the military has something called uh, the tooth-to-tail ratio. Uh, it is the amount of support soldiers that are required to keep one soldier in the field. Um, I don't know what the church's tooth-to-tail ratio would be, but I don't think it's where it should be, um, especially uh, these days. Um, with Missions Conference coming in two weeks, uh, we're going to be hearing from uh, missionaries about the work. Um, this is a good time for us, especially us young guys, uh, to stop and to spend some time with God and to really consider where our uh, goals lie. Where, where do we put our value? Is it things? Is it treasure here on earth or is it treasure in heaven? Um, now, God may not be calling you to the mission field. He may never call you. But first we need to stop and surrender and be ready to go. Um, with the tooth to tail ratio, there has to be more tail to keep soldiers in the field. There is always going to be more support soldiers keeping uh, missionaries in the field. So if God does call you uh, to stop and to work a, uh, a five to nine here in Australia and to, to serve in the church, praise God, that's where God's called you to be. Um, but we need to be ready to go if he calls us. Um, that's it for the, uh, the, the crew. And now we're going to take a few minutes just to look at the mission. Uh, ships in the Navy are sent out to complete a mission. God has given the church a mission to do. Um, the church has three purposes. Uh, the church is to glorify God, edify the saints, and evangelize the lost. Um, whenever we're together, we have the opportunity to praise God, lift his name up on high. We do that in... Uh, prayer and songs and uh, even just uh, the work, everything that we do, we can do it for God's glory. Um, and likewise, when we're together, we have the opportunity to encourage and strengthen each other. Um, and that's uh, how we edify each other. Um, the directive of evangelizing the lost is given to every member of the church, regardless of what role you play in the church. Uh, Stephen was called as a deacon, as a servant but he was martyred for preaching. Um, nobody is excused from this service. Um, let's just quickly look at uh, two uh, um, requirements uh, we need when we carry out the mission. Uh, first is we need to have unity with each other. Um, we are vastly different people with different views on things. Just because we gather together doesn't mean we have unity. Uh, someone told me earlier in the week, you can tie two cats together by their tails and throw them in the backyard. They'll have union, but they're not going to have unity. Um, the, the same is true for the church. We can be gathered together, um, but if we don't have the, uh, the same, uh, if we're not connected through this, we're not going to have unity. Uh, 1 Corinthians 1, 9, 10 says, God is faithful by whom you were called unto the fellowship of his Son, Jesus Christ our Lord. 
Now I beseech you, brethren, by the name of our Lord Jesus Christ, that ye all speak the same thing, and that there be no divisions among you, but that ye, uh, uh, that ye be perfectly joined together in the same mind and in the same judgment. We can't do that without the Bible. Uh, if we have the mind of Christ, we'll be able to serve him better. Um, and the next thing would be we need to be uh, training to serve God uh, in whatever ministry we're in. Um, there was an incident in the, uh, that happened during the 1983 Beirut bombing. Uh, there was a, a military base that was bombed there, and the, uh, the U.S. sent the battleship USS New Jersey um, in the bay to support the anti-terrorism operation that followed afterwards. Uh, when they first sent there, they spent most of their time going in just one big circle and not really doing anything. They had next to no real experience and were doing very little in the way of training and drills. In fact, they had barely been trained in using the guns on the ship. After some time, the U.S. government ordered a strike on uh, the hills in the area. And when the USS uh, New Jersey tried to fire, they performed very poorly and were wildly inaccurate. The whole situation was an embarrassment to the Navy during that time. Uh, the church will be the same way. If we do not spend time training in our warfare, uh, we'll not be able to serve God the way we should be. If we don't know the Bible, we're not going to be able to tell it to other people. Um, and there's been times when people will ask you questions and you may not be able to answer it, but you've got this, so you can go and, uh, and learn it. Um, we have no excuse of uh, not running our drills. I know that uh, a few of the Sunday school classes do sword drills. Um, we are in a warfare, and we can't forget that. Um, 2 Timothy 3.16 says, All scripture is given by inspiration of God and is profitable for doctrine, for reproof, for correction, for instruction in righteousness. Um, it's incredibly, incredibly important. Um, yeah, so that's that. Um, I do want to tell a story, uh, just an encouragement to, uh, especially the young people here, um, this happened when I was heading back from Adelaide. My flight was delayed by uh, about an hour and a half. And because of that, um, I was uh, leaving at sunset. Uh, so we got onto the plane. As we were taking off, uh, there was a lot of turbulence. Uh, we got into this thick cloud cover. You couldn't see anything. Um, and the, the, the guy next to me, he didn't fly well at all. He was uh, sitting there wringing his hands. He had his eyes shut. And he just, as we're going through, the clouds were getting rougher and rougher. And he was just holding his hands together even more, just absolutely terrified. I was looking between him and out my window. I was kind of chuckling to myself. It wasn't probably the right attitude to have, but uh, yeah. Uh, and just as I looked back from him to my window, we burst through the clouds. And immediately the plane was just smooth. And all you could see was this absolutely beautiful, breathtaking view. The sun was still setting. It was just a sea of clouds, and it was absolutely amazing. Um, and it hit me right then that uh, so often we'll be like that man. We'll be uh, terrified of what's happening. We'll be terrified of the turbulence. We'll have our eyes shut, and we'll be wringing our hands, and we'll completely miss the beautiful thing that God is doing right there. Um, and that's the way that ministry is if we do that. And then further to that is that if we are looking at someone who is terrified and we'd ca keep our eyes on them. I almost missed it. I'd only just look back as we burst through the clouds. Um, and that, that's probably the, the most important thing if you could take anything away that uh, fear will keep you away from serving God and it, it will keep you from seeing the beautiful things. Um, I'll end with, uh, close with James 4.14, whereas you know not what shall be on the morrow, for what is your life it is even a vapour that appeareth for a little time and then vanisheth the way. We, we never know how much time we have left. Jesus might come back today for us all, or it might be in years, or we all might uh, die of old age. We don't know. But if we don't spend this time that he's given us serving him, we're going to miss that, that beautiful opportunity, that, that beautiful sight. All right, I'll just close in prayer. <clears throat> Heavenly Father, Lord, thank you for this night. Pray that uh, this message would be a help to someone. Uh, just thank you for your strength, your grace, Lord. Uh, pray that you would help uh, us as a church to serve you better in whatever role you've placed us in, Lord. I pray that uh, you would help us to, uh, to go out to serve you in the, uh, the mission you've given us. Um, Lord, pray that you would take us home safely tonight and that uh, you would give us uh, grace and mercy. I pray this in your name. Amen. Okay. Is there anything else? Lord, that's it. Okay. We're dismissed. <laughs>